planet's most dense place. Go for a ride. You told Ariel to invite Rusty. It's more like 
I'm gonna date you. And you look so handsome tonight. Thank you. Well, you stuck me in the back seat with the crazy woman. We won't stop moving and talking. She's excited to be with you. Oh, sure. That, but the problem is, yeah. between you and me, uh huh. I can't do it. Oh, no. It? You can't do it? No, sir. Well, that's okay, Will. It's only the first day. Right. Even in Chicago, we don't do it on the first day. Really? I swear. Oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Great. Then let's dance. Come on. Dance? Dance? What the hell do you think I'm talking about? <laughs> you said you could do it. That's what you meant. What? Oh, that! Hell, any idiot can do that! I can't do this! I can't dance! <laughs> what? Did you hear that? Your boyfriend says he can't dance. Come on, guys. Cut him some slack. It's unnatural. It's like riding a bike. Well, it's falling off a wall. It's as easy as learning to swim. I can't swim. Hey, <laughs> what do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah!
Ariel? Ariel? She's not here, Chuck. <laughs> Mrs. Moore. Did I scare you? Nope, not at all. Did you tell Ariel I that? I told her every time you called. All right, I guess she's busy and all. Mm. She and the girls went to Wendy Joe's to study. Oh, really? Oh, just that Wendy Jo. She, she said she left with Rusty two hours ago. Oh. Who is it, Vi? Mr. Cranston. Evening, Reverend. I was just looking for Ariel. This is a bit late, Mr. Cranston. Yes, sir. That's why I'm surprised she's not home. As am I. Good night, Mr. Cranston. And remember, we have a front door for guests. Yes, sir. Where is she? She told me she was going to Wendy Joe's. Did you know this? No, I did not. So how does it feel, Vi, now that she's lying to you too? I'm not assuming anything until I get an answer from her. It was frightening enough when she was running around with Chuck Cranston. Now she's out in the middle of the night with that punk who's campaigning against me and the entire town council. How long can you keep defending her? I am not defending her. We are not on opposite sides here, are we? Or are we? Where were you? Rusty, Wendy, Joe, and... Don't even bother. You know you weren't at Wendy, Joe. I can't believe you're checking up on me. Sweetie, how do we know you're not sick or hurt? I am concerned for your well-being. Oh, really? Then how come when I'm at home, you're never worried about how I'm feeling or what I'm thinking, and then the second I walk out the door, suddenly you're the concerned parent! No, she doesn't mean Stop that. Stop defending her. She's just start answering questions. I don't know. Could it would do? You don't listen to me anymore than you listen to her. Stop! She has become willful and obstinate. Like her father? I am her spiritual guardian. You used to be her friend. I don't understand what's happening. I don't know what to do anymore. Yes, you do. And you find it in your heart to forgive her. And you stop and see there's part of her that's trying to obey. A part of her is dying to run away. Can't you hear what she's trying to say? Can you find it in your soul to accept her? If she stumbles on your holy path, do you have to reprimand? Or are there ways to make her understand? of your hand. Can't you remember when we were that age, pumped up with promise and wrestling with rage? Can't you remember when we were a family back then? Would we be one again? We are a family. No, we're not. The accident changed everything. Ever since Bobby's death, you have made impossible demands of Ariel. I have not confused Ariel's behavior with my son's death. He was my son, too! Shaw. It's been 21 years I've been a minister's wife. And after all that time, I still think you're a wonderful preacher. You can lift a congregation up so high, they have to look down to see heaven. The one on one where you could use a little work. I thought at least you believed in me. I never stopped. Does it ever cross your mind that I miss you? Is there any chance we'll find the joy? 
joy that we shared at the start. Can you remember what you felt before that feeling fell apart? Can you find it in your heart? Have you lost my love somewhere far behind? Or can you find it in your heart? is not a crime. Yeah. 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 Ever since the dawn of time, if anything, people had the right to, to house the moon to move all night. When folks were tribal, back before the Bible, they were liable to dance when the crops came in, or pull at all the stops when the earth would spin, or maybe they'd have a battle to win, so they would dance. Every time they had the chance, whatever the season or circumstance, they'd find a reason to throw a party in their pants, so let's do like they did, and dance, dance, dance! You said party in your pants. <laughs> cool it! Ren, we're not saying the speech is bad, it's just that it's no good. Then what do you want me to say? I've rewritten it nine times. Here's the thing. You're going to be speaking to Reverend Morn, some of the stubbornest people in town. You've already got plenty of people boiling mad. Yeah, folks are picking sides. And they're not picking yours. Then who am I kidding? This thing has gotten way out of hand already. I should, I should probably just give it up. Whoa there, little buddy. We don't mean to discourage you. <laughs> After all the posters we've painted, all the flags we've cast out, everyone at school is climbing the walls. So hang in there. You just got to rethink your approach. Now, Mama says... Oh, Mama. Oh, time. Now hold on just one minute. Everything I ever learned that gets me through the worst I learned at my mama's knee. Every time I'm turned around, I turn to Mama first. And you be wise to memorize what Mama says to me. Now, Mama ain't been wrong yet, and I'm the living proof. Yeah, take that. What now, listen up. Mama says, don't use a toaster while standing in the shower. Now, who can argue with that? <laughs> Mama says, don't hold your breath for longer than an hour. The woman knows where it's at.
can't back down. Now mama makes a lot of sense if you know how to listen. She is clear and concise. She's concise. Daddy says I love a son, but she's got more of what's missing. I say, hey, it's free advice. Then what do you expect at that price? Hear me now. Mama said What do you believe in is all you really own? And I believe that she's right. Mama said If you've got doubt, well then boy you're not alone. Just means you're ready to fight. I thought of one more thing. <laughs> now, Mama says, Don't buy a chandelier unless you've got a ceiling. And I don't know what that's about. <laughs> Mama says, Don't you want tin foil unless you lack that feeling. Somehow she figured that out. Let's get Chuck. Yeah. 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 All right. Please don't. I'm already in enough trouble tonight. I don't want to cause anymore. Chuck found out about our little trip to the barbecue, and he's been on a tear ever since. He ordered me not to see you anymore. I told him I see who I like, and he just started swinging. Take a look at the line. I'm just so mad at myself. I don't know why I was with him in the first place. Maybe you should see a doctor. I'm fine. You want me to call your folks? No! Please don't. I just want to be alone, okay? Come on, guys. Let's go. Do you want some company? No. <clears throat> yes! You sure? I mean, I'll take it personally. Shh. What? Listen. What? Come on. Where, where are we going? Don't miss it! Come on! Are you out of your mind? You notice. Are we like 40 feet above the water? Yeah, but look around. Up here I can pretend I'm halfway to heaven. I listen to the river, and look what happens. This place is covered with graffiti. It's not graffiti. It's poetry. I call this place my diary. You climb all the way up here to write poems? Uh-huh. They're all dedicated to Bobby. Who's Bobby? My brother. You never told me you have a brother? Had. <laughs> brother. Bobby was one of the four kids that went off the Patani Bridge. God, I'm sorry. Yeah, one of the four young souls who held the promise of Beaumont's brightest future. Why didn't I know this? You never talk about it. And once my daddy decided that the town needed saving, he never mentioned Bobby again. You must miss him real bad. I try not to think about it. That never works. I'll, I'll bet you think about it all the time. How did you know that? I study you. Oh yeah, and what do you see? Somebody who's smart. Thank you. Maybe a little bit angry. Maybe a lot. And somebody who's sad. I've, al I've always wondered where that came from. Well, now you know.
What? I just feel like nobody's ever really stopped to look at me. No. You in my mind 24 hours a day. I thought that dreams belonged to other men. Cause each time I get close, they fall apart again. I feared my heart would beat in secrecy. I face the night alone. How could I know that all my life I only needed you? in Beaumont. I still don't even know what I'm saying to the town councilor. That reminds me. You'll need this. The Holy Bible? Uh-huh. I marked all the pages. This is great. Where'd you know how to find all these? You're kidding, right? Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. I thought the perfect love was hard to find. Had almost given up, you must have read my mind. And all those dreams are safe for a rainy day. They're finally coming true. I share them all with you. Cause now I would like to remind all the young people who have joined us here today that this town council meeting is convened to consider official town business. Really? Disturbances oh, will not be tolerated. The floor is now open. Yes. My name is Ren McCormick, and uh, on behalf of most of the senior class of Beaumont High, I move that Local Ordinance 416, the law against dancing within the town limits of Beaumont, be abolished. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! 
<laughs> and I, Willard Hewitt of 35 Cloverdale Road, would like to second that notion. Yeah. Yeah. Eleanor, may I have the floor, please? Certainly, Reverend. Mr. McCormick, you wish to change our law because you want to throw a dance. That is your right. But it is also my obligation to challenge any enterprise which, in my experience, fosters the use of drugs, the abuse of alcohol, and most importantly, celebrates spiritual corruption. And I think you're going to find that most folks in our community agree with me. Most folks? Now, if anyone can convince me that there's no danger in your raucous party plans, I might reconsider my position. Until then, no. I cannot condone it. Well, I believe a vote is in order. Oh, 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 ready? Isn't there any kind of discussion? Yes. Come on, Mr. Come on. Roger. Sit down. Come on. Come on. I believe that Mr. McCormick has a right to be heard. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I just wanted to say a few words because I know this idea scares a lot of people, and it shouldn't. <coughs> From the oldest of times, people danced for, for many reasons. They danced so their crops would be plentiful, or so their hunt would be good. They danced to show their community spirit, and they danced to celebrate. And that's the kind of dancing we're talking about. Mr. McCormick, we do not need a history. Are we told, excuse me, Reverend, are we told in Psalm 149 to praise ye Lord? Sing unto the Lord a new song. Let them praise his name in the dance. And it was King David. King David we read about in Samuel. And what did David do? What did David... What did David do? Ah, David danced before the Lord with all of his might, leaping and dancing before the Lord. Leaping and dancing. And, and Ecclesiastes assures us that there's a time to every purpose under heaven. A, a time to laugh and a time to weep. A time to mourn and a time to dance. There was a time for this law, but not anymore. This, this is our time. Our time to celebrate life. That's the way it was in the beginning. That's the way it's always been, and that's the way it should be now. So, thank you. Order! There's a motion to repeal local ordinance 416. How does the council vote? No. 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 The motion is defeated, and this meeting is adjourned. Ren, up till now I have been real proud about keeping my opinion to myself, but if I don't say something now I'm gonna burst. What's there to say? The council voted and I lost. Sweetie, you never had a prayer. That's not funny, Mom. Ren, look, when you got to the part about laughing and weeping and leaping and dancing, which I love, don't get me wrong, I was watching the faces of the town council members. Trust me, Reverend Moore had those votes locked up before we walked in here tonight. You think he told them how to vote? <laughs> you can still sound shocked, but I love that about you. But, but he's a man of God. <laughs> he's a man. Who <laughs> were railroaded. Damn, that pisses me off, Mom. Good. Reverend Moore said he might reconsider if someone could convince him there's no danger in these raucous party plans. Raucous party plans? Can you believe these people, Ma? I mean, what? Make him reconsider. Me? You? And him? Yup. When? Now. But, Red. Mom? <laughs> Stop. Until you do, you'll never make peace with that man or this town. But I couldn't convince him in here. He wasn't listening in here. What else do you want me to say? I read my speech, I felt my Bible. You did everything but speak from the heart. Re Reverend Moore's a really smart man. So are you. He's stubborn. You're not? Look, I'd love to stay, I'd love to watch, but I've got to get home to hose down your aunt and uncle. <laughs> Mom? I love you. You don't have a choice. Now we go. <laughs>
Mr. McCormick, it's late. Really? I'm wide awake. Look, I have one question. And it couldn't wait until morning. Just one question. Reverend, before tonight's meeting, did you tell the town council how to vote? We discussed the issue, of course. But did you tell them how to vote? Friend, this is more than a question of a dance. Did you? Look, I, I understand what this town has been through. No, I don't think you do. If you did, you wouldn't have provoked your friends to reopen the wounds we have healed. These wounds are not here. If they were, people wouldn't be glaring at me on the street, or snubbing my mom at the market. They wouldn't be boycotting my uncle's business, and you wouldn't be fixing the vote on the town council. I thought it was time to put an end to this nonsense. Nonsense? All I say is, who's up for a little dancing? And all people here can think about is the Patani Braves and the four kids. Mr. McCormick! And I know your son was one of them, Reverend. I'm, I'm sorry for your loss. I truly am, but... Honoring their memory by shutting out the world isn't working. And I suppose you have all the answers. I don't... And you're going to set me straight. No, I say... How can you presume to know what I've been through? You haven't got a clue! Good night, Mr. McCormick. Please, if I can only just... I would like to be alone. Sir, you already are. We both are. You and me. We've both lost somebody. And even though people say they understand, they really don't. I, I bet you stop a hundred times a day and wonder why. I do. I, I wonder... Why'd my dad leave? Was it something I did? Something I didn't do? Could I have made him stay and maybe I could bring him back, but I can't. But I don't have to tell you that because you already know what that's like. I do. So I, I guess I just came to this town frustrated and angry and it felt really good to kick up a fuss and I know it hurt a lot of people. I'm sorry for that, I truly am, but I'm just so tired of living in the past, Reverend, and I can't stand still. I've noticed. Okay, I'm gonna go. Thank you for listening and all, but Thank you, Reverend. Ren! I'm sorry that your father will never get to know you. Thank you. Daddy? Oh, I didn't hear you come down. I heard voices. That was your friend, Ren. He sure asked a lot of questions. And what did you say? For once in my life, I had very little to say. I think I'm running out of answers. Daddy, I, I know it must be hard for you, and I know I don't make it any better. I just don't think I believe in everything that you believe in, but I believe in you. Now get some sleep. We have a sermon tomorrow. If I can figure out what to say. You will. When souls come to me for protection, I guide them whatever the cost But while I've been giving direction Maybe it's me who got lost Heaven help me find my way now Open up my heart again Help me find the words to say now
me in asking our Lord to guide and protect our children. Travis, Lyle, we're out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, could you give us a second here? <laughs> Losers. Now, Rusty, here's the deal. I could throw a clean sheet over the front seat of the pickup so we don't end up smelling like the dogs. That is too kind of fits and I could roll up the pants legs with duct tape. I love where this is going. Mama could whip up one of those croissants. Uh, corsage? One of them. You're painting a picture for me, aren't you? I see a rusty truck that smells bad, a taped up brown suit, and me wearing a corsage made out of who knows what. What do you think? Yes, ma'am. You want him? Oh, Willard, I'd love to. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> Shaw, you did a good thing this morning. I'm just not sure it was the right thing. I think it comes close. I miss you. I miss us. I hope you never doubt that I love you. If that's hard to figure out sometimes, well then, I apologize. But you are dearer to my life than you could ever realize If I try to make amends Can you teach me how to start? Can you find it in your heart? Sean? Yes? <laughs> I'm